Bible study, do the holidays and teachers being gone, different things. So remember that we will not have Bible study next Wednesday night. But we will have a New Year's Eve service, so please remember that. That's going to start at 8 o'clock and we'll go till midnight. And we're going to have a time of worship, time for the Word, and we'll have a time of fellowship in the back. We're going to do foot washing, and they're going to have a, ki- a movie for the kids in the back while the adults are in here, I think. And then uh, we're going to have snacks, and then we'll have a more of a detailed thing on Sunday. But just want to give you a heads up. That will be coming up on New Year's Eve at 8 o'clock. And then this Saturday from 10 to 12, we're going to meet here and go Christmas carol to some shut-ins that haven't been able to be here for a while, that some are in the nursing home and different things. So we're going to go and Christmas carol to them and hopefully bring them some good cheer. Maybe maybe they'll cover their ears and say, oh, my, you better leave. But I don't know. We're going to try to bring them some good cheer. But anyway, if you want to come and be a part of that, come at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. If you have any questions, you can see Sister Terry. She'll give you more information if you need that. So I think that's all the announcements. Oh, please stop back there and pick up your Christmas cards. And if you know someone that's not here and you want to take them and give them to them, feel free. We're going to take the ones that we go visit and give them to them. But if you know somebody else that hasn't been here and you'd like to take their cards to them, please feel free to do so. Sister Beth has graciously, calmly, and quietly, right? She's put them all back in alphabetical order for about, what, fourth time? (laughs) So, yes, thank you, Beth. Please stop out there and grab your cards. And also there are calendars out there on the information table if you didn't get one of those on Sunday. Feel free to grab one or two or three or whatever you need and take those home with you. So let's stand tonight. I'm just up here rambling on. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, just to come together and worship and, God, to study your word. I pray tonight, God, as we enter into this service, God, clear our minds and our hearts, and, God, let us make room for you, Lord. And I pray every thought, every idea, God, that would hinder us tonight would leave right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, as we worship, God, let us worship you in spirit And in truth, Lord, and I pray, God, as we study your word, that you would open our minds and our hearts. And God, let us receive what you want us to receive. And God, I pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Days kind of run together, but I think last Wednesday I was not able to be here. And Pastor, did you lead song service? Darla, okay. So, so thanks for, <laughs> thanks for filling in, and again, just happy I'm here. God's, God is good, good times and bad, he's still God, amen. Let's open up as we sing, we're together again. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again, in one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord, we're together again. Just praising the Lord, we're together again. In one accord, something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. And just praising the Lord. Let's sing that again, church. Yes, we're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. In one accord. Something good about to happen something good is in store we're together again 
Just praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. This next song uh, was a new one for uh, for me until Brother Dan introduced it a couple Sundays ago. And I was going to say some of you older saints would remember this, but I should say some of you more seasoned saints might remember this song. It's Stepping in the Light. And uh, who's upstairs tonight? Hello, Sister Steph. We'll probably do verses 1, 2, and 4. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Trying to follow our Savior and King. Shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of light. Pressing more closely to Him who is leading when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us. Happy, how happy our praises each day. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of life. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Upward, still upward, we'll follow our guide. When we shall see Him, the King in His beauty. Happy, how happy our place at His side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of light. Amen. You've got another hand clap tonight, church. Amen. And I... I'll just say this. I appreciate when you guys sing along and clap because that just kind of helps me keep time too. And I just appreciate you just joining in and just worshiping the Lord. Amen. Because I'm not up here trying to perform. Thank God. We're just here to worship him. Amen. Amen. Before pastor comes for prayer requests, raise your hands if you know the answer. Now, you don't have to raise them. Unless you're worshiping, but this title of the song, Raise Your Hands If You Know the Answer. Raise your hands if you know the answer. Raise your hands if you know the truth. Raise your hand if you know the answer. Raise your hands if the answer lives in you. Oh, yes. Raise your hands if you know the answer. Raise your hands. If you know the truth, raise your hands.
raise your hands if you know the answer. Raise your hands if the answer lives in you. As pastor comes, let's sing that again, church. Raise your hands if you know the answer. Raise your hands if you know the truth. Raise your hands if you know the answer. Raise your hands if the answer lives in you. It's easy to raise your hands in here. But how many is brave enough to go out there and say, I know the answer? Amen. We shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel today. Just because people don't want to hear it and people try to deny it, we still have the answer that people are looking for tonight. They're trying to fill that void, that empty place that only Christ can fill with everything else the world has to offer. But we have the answer to what they're looking for tonight. Amen. He's still the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Uh, Brother Luke asked if we'd pray for Teresa. Uh, they believe she had another stroke. So she'll be going tomorrow to have an MRI. But he said her speech is messed up and her face is kind of drawn. So they'll be doing an MRI on her tomorrow to see what, the damage or what. So please lift her up in prayer. And remember all that are not here that are sick, that are home in the nursing home. And if you have a need tonight, would you slip up your hand tonight? God is our answer. He's bigger than strokes. He's bigger than diabetes. He's bigger than COVID. He's bigger than whatever attacks our bodies tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you, Lord, because you said in your word that you are mindful of our every need. But God, you also said to knock and it shall be open. Ask. And we shall receive. God, we stand and we knock and we ask tonight. God, realizing, God, that we are limited in ourselves. But God, we know tonight there is no limit to what you can do. And Father, I pray tonight, God, that you would reach down and touch Sister Teresa, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd open up blood vessels in her brain tonight. Let the blood begin to flow like it's supposed to flow. I pray for those, God, that are homesick tonight. God, that you would just... Just reach down and touch each and every one. God, those in the nursing home, those in the hospital, God, those that are home tonight, and God, they're sick and afflicted. God, we know that you're the answer. And God, you have no limits and you have no boundaries. God, you can touch each and every one. And God, we call out to you, asking God that you would just move on the behalf of your people. God, we pray all this tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. We call it done by faith. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad, church, that through it all, one day it's all going to be worth it? Didn't Paul call it a good fight? It is a good fight. Mm. This song is what a day that will be. My, my, my. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden shore, what a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. 
What a day. day. Amen. Glorious Amen. Glorious day that will be. Oh, yes. There'll be no, no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness. Sing it, church. No pain. No, no more dying, dying over there. there. And forever I will be with the one who died for Jesus. me. What a day, glorious day that will be. Jesus. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Lift your hands tonight, church, and continue praising him. What a day that will be. Oh, yes. Jesus. All the heartaches and things that we go through, yes, Lord. it's going to be all worth it when we see him and hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. My, my, my. What a day. Mm. Can we sing verse 2 again? Oh, yes. No oh, more yes. sorrow there. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness or oh, pain. No more dying over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see when i look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be give him a hand clap of praise tonight are you thankful I mean, those is going to be a reality one of these days. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated if you can't be. Good to feel the presence of the Lord. I don't know how it feels out there, but it's strong up there. How many knows God's still got on Wednesday night? I'm trying to turn, move this thing down. I'm kind of loud. Am I loud? She's going to turn me down. She likes to turn me down. She wished she had one of those volume controls at home. <laughs> she muted me. <laughs> she wished she had one of those at home. Uh, tonight, try to f tell you where to start. I got three verses real quick that I'm going to read, but how about turn to Matthew 10, verse 8. You guys start there. But while you're turning there, I got a couple of funnies for you. It says, a small plane was flying with four people aboard the pilot. So what's that sound? Oh, sorry, I thought it was echoing. <laughs> I thought it was me. 
All right, let me start over. A small plane was flying with four people aboard, the pilot, a priest, a world-famous scientist, and a drifter. The pilot announces that the plane is in deep trouble and they must flee for safety. Unfortunately, we only have three parachutes for the four of us, says the pilot. The scientist immediately exclaims, I'm the smartest man in the world. I must be saved. And he grabs the parachute and jumps from the plane. The priest volunteers, I've lived a long time and, and the Lord awaits me. You two may take the remaining parachutes. The drifter says, don't worry, Father. We have got one for you. The smartest man in the world just jumped with my backpack. <laughs> Grandpa decided that shopping for Christmas presents had become too difficult. All his grandchildren had everything they needed, so he decided to send them each a check. On each card he wrote, Happy Christmas, Grandpa. P.S. Buy your own present. Conclusion. Now, while Grandpa enjoyed the family festivities, he thought his grandchildren were just slightly distant. It preyed on his mind into the new year. Then one day he was sorting out in his study, and under a pile of magazines he found a little pile of checks for his grandchildren. He had completely forgotten to put them in the Christmas cards. <laughs> Get your own. <laughs> tonight, I want to, the title of my lesson tonight is Do You Freely Give? Do You Freely Give? Now, I have Romans 5 and 8 and John three sixteen and John 14, 2 that I'm going to read to you that are very familiar passages of scriptures that you don't all have to turn there if you don't want, but I have them for, for us to read. If you want to write them down, look at them later. But Romans 5 and 8 tells us, But God commended His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we all know John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 14, verse 2 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Tonight, each and every one of us have been given the free gift or the opportunity to receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says that God commended His love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ freely died for you and I. We know that when they came to take Jesus to the cross, the Bible says when he spoke the very words, I am he, the soldiers that came to take him fell to the ground as dead men. Jesus could have walked away. He didn't have to go to the cross. But he freely laid down his life because he knew that if you and I, amen, if he didn't go to the cross, that you and I might not be able to be saved. So he freely laid down his life while we were in the midst of our sin. And we know that God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, and Jesus freely came to offer us the free gift of salvation and the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And John 14 and 2, a bonus. Amen. I don't know about you, but the bonus is getting a mansion. I don't need a mansion. I'm just going to be happy to get there. Amen. I don't care about the mansion, but that's another free gift that we have waiting on us. The neat thing about it is, the Bible says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus spoke these words and He said, I'm going to prepare a place for each and every one of you. You may feel like you don't fit in here or there or at work or wherever, but can I tell you, there's a place waiting on you in heaven, that Jesus himself has prepared just for you. There's nobody that's going to walk into heaven and say, well, I just don't fit in. How many knows there's going to be a specific place for every one of us tonight? And Jesus, Jesus freely has prepared that for you and I. He freely 
blessed us with the gift of the promise of eternal life. The greatest gift that he gave us was the, was the forgiveness of our sin. But he freely has went above and beyond. Amen. We can go through the word of God and find countless promises that the Lord has freely given to you and I. It is free for us, but how many knows it cost him something? It cost him his life. But we've all been given so much, but how much do we give to others? Every one of us sitting here tonight, we're blessed. Amen? We're blessed to know that our sins have been forgiven. We have a home waiting on us in heaven. We were all able to come to church tonight. There are some that would love to be here tonight that were not able, that could not make it because they physically are not able. So if you were able to walk in here tonight and sit down in the pew on your very own, you're blessed. Because somebody else can't do that tonight. Amen? But how often do we think about the blessings that we have freely been given? Sometimes we're kind of like spoiled children. Have you ever met spoiled kids? Yeah, I've seen them at Walmart laying on the floor. (laughs) Or they're crying and telling their mom and dad what they want, and they need it right now. I remember once, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I remember my daughter was getting mouthy in Walmart, and I slapped her in the mouth, and her lips started bleeding. I was looking around. I was like, oh, no, are they going to come get me? I believe they still need whoopings, don't they? (laughs) But anyway, that's not my message tonight. I don't know how I got on that. Oh, I know how. We've all been given things from God, but how often do we share what we have with others? I remember when the kids were little, when they were real little, when they would get presents at Christmas, we had to teach them to share because they would say, this is mine. They claimed it as their own but we had to teach them how to share. I believe we should claim the blessings and the promises of God as our own, but we should also be willing to freely share. Amen? The world we live in today says get all you can get. Take all you can take. Amen? We don't live in a world that teaches us to help others in need. Amen? Thank God there are still people that are willing to help out, but most of the world today... Is all they're worried about is getting more for themselves. We will live in a world that says, get what you can get, and while you have the opportunity, take, take, take. And a lot of people today have mentally overwhelmed themselves trying to think of ways how they can get more, more, more of the things of the world. Nothing we've been given from God is something that was owed to us, but it was a free gift. We live in a world today where a lot of people think everybody owes me something. <laughs> we live in a society today that teaches God owes us your, our salvation. How many knows God didn't owe us anything? Jesus dying on the cross was a privilege and an opportunity for us to receive the free gift of salvation. But tonight we're going to start in Matthew 10 verse 8 and then we're going to go to Acts 20. Verse 35, but Matthew 10, verse 8 says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. The gift of forgiveness was given to us freely. The gift of eternal life was given to us freely. The gift of having a home in heaven was given to us freely. The gift to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover was a free gift given from the Lord. Everything that we get from God is free, but we should be willing to share the free gift that we have received with somebody else. When was the last time you told somebody, Jesus loves you? You don't have to answer, but just think about it. When was the last time you told somebody, Jesus loves you? When was the last time you shared the true meaning of Christmas with someone who didn't know? When was the last time you shared your testimony and told somebody how you came to the cross? When was the last time you freely gave the opportunity to lead someone or share the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
We freely have been given, but so many times we're not so freely to give. We're embarrassed or we're ashamed or we don't feel like we're qualified enough. But we have, if we have the opportunity to share, how many knows we should be willing to share? Amen. Somebody out there needs to hear your testimony. Somebody out there needs you to share to them and tell them that Jesus loves them. People are looking today. We sang that song, raise your hand if you know the answer. And we all raise our hands and say amen. And we rejoice in saying, I know Jesus. But we live in a world that we pass by multitudes and multitudes of people that don't know the answer. Are we willing to freely share the answer that we have? How many knows the Bible tells us better to give than receive? Acts 20, verse 30. Five, and then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. We live in a world that say that says get, 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 get all you can get. But the Bible teaches us it's better to give than to receive. I've shared this with you several times, and I mean it with all my heart. The second greatest thing outside your own salvation is when you can lead somebody else to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. When you can lead somebody else in the sinner's prayer. How many knows I can't save nobody, you can't save nobody, but we can lead them to the Lord, and He's the one that can save them. Has anybody ever experienced that tonight? Will you agree with me tonight? What a great feeling to be able to share the good news of the God. How many knows it's not a sad story? It's still a good news. It's still a good story. Amen. When we can share the gift, we ought to be willing to share it. Amen. You've been blessed with finances tonight and you have the opportunity to bless somebody else. Can I tell you, it feels good to be a blessing to somebody else. If you have the opportunity to bless somebody, amen, with something that that you have multiplied an amount of, and you're able to help somebody that doesn't have something, it feels so good to be a blessing. Amen. Maybe you don't have money to give and finances, but maybe you got some things. Maybe you got 15 cans of corn in your cupboard, and you know somebody that don't have any. If you can take five cans of corn and give it, or one can of corn and give it, how many knows it's not always about dollars and cents? It's about the heart, about being a blessing. Amen? We need to learn to give and to find out how good it feels to give. And how many knows you can't outgive the Lord? Don't give to get. Some people give so they can get blessed and get more from God. But how many knows we shouldn't give to get? We should give to be a blessing and be obedient to the Lord. And we should do it freely. Amen? All right, let's go on. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. And I'll read to you Romans 12, 1. You all probably know that. But then we'll go to 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. I believe the only way that we're able to be a true giver and a genuine giver of the Lord is because of this right here, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you have been bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. In Romans 12, 1, we all know this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I believe the only way we can be a true giver is when we realize what Jesus has done for us. Amen? The price that he paid to purchase us. Amen? Our eternal life was a free gift to us, but we know he paid it with a terrible terrible price when he gave his life it was free to us but it cost him great pain and great agony but when we truly understand i'm not my own i belong to the lord i believe that's when we can truly become a true giver of the lord 
because we truly understand what we've been given. So we are willing to give, not to get glory to ourselves, but to bring glory to the one that gave us the greatest gift of all time. Amen? When we come to a place and say, Lord, here am I. Here's my body. I give it to you, a living sacrifice. God's not asking you to do anything unreasonable. God's not going to ask you to give $500 if you don't have $500. God's not going to ask you to go buy a bunch of stuff if you don't have the money to buy. God's only asking you to do the reasonable, the reasonable, the things that you're able to do. God's not going to ask you to do anything that you cannot do. God don't set us up for failure. Amen? God does not ask us to do anything that He does not give us the ability or the, 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 need, the, the, the thing that we have that we need to give. He, he will give us what we need to give. Amen? Does that make sense? But we're to glorify God in our body and our spirit, which belongs to God. Don't you go out and do good deeds because I said to go out and do, do, do good deeds. You go out and do good deeds because you want to glorify God. Right? But we have too many Christian hoarders today. We want to receive the blessings of God. We want to come to church and soak up all the blessings. But we never want to give anything away. Ever watch the show Hoarders? They have a hard time letting go of some of that stuff. We've got Christian hoarders. They want to take it all in. But they don't want to give any away. Amen. Freely we've been given. Freely we, uh, freely we receive. We should freely give. Amen. You want to bring glory to God? Be a cheerful giver. Give freely. Amen? Give with a cheerful heart, not out of obligation. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. And then we'll go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. Don't give out of obligation. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Don't do it because you feel obligated to do it. Do it because you want to do it as unto the Lord and you want to be a blessing and do it cheerfully. Amen? Do it to bring glory to God. So someone might see the true love of God, amen, shining out of your life. Amen? Not so people can look at you and say, oh man, look at him, he gives everything he has. Have you ever heard people say, he'll give the shirt off his back. Not to bring glory to us, but to bring glory to God. Amen. Jesus gave his gave the stripes on his back for our healing. Amen. Sometimes if we like to get the pat on the back, the Bible says that's our only reward we're going to get. If we want to hear the applause of men saying, Oh, look at the good things that you've done. Oh, you gave so much and you did so much and you like to hear the applause from men, how many knows that's the only reward you're going to get? But if we do it as unto the Lord, we're going to be reaping blessings in heaven. Amen. All right, let's go on. Don't give out an obligation. Do it freely because you want to do it and because you want to do it as unto the Lord. Okay. 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. If we have to give, we should be willing to give. Amen. If we have to give, we should be willing to give. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? That's pretty hard. Pretty harsh. That's the word. How can we call ourselves a Christian if we're not willing to help our brother or help our sister? Amen. I said it a while ago. If you got 15 cans of corn in your cupboard, and you see brother so-and-so that has nothing... And you're not willing to give them that extra can of corn. How many know we should? How dwelt the love of God in us? If you got two hundred dollars in your wallet and you see somebody that don't have food to eat for supper, and you're able to give them some money, and they're doing all they can to try to provide for their family, and, and they're not out wasting their money, and God speaks to you and says, "Give them ten dollars," and you say, "No, that's my ten dollars." How dwelt the love of God in us? Amen. We should be willing to be obedient when God nudges us. How many know God's not going to force us to do anything? He's a gentleman. He nudges us. 
And if God nudges us to do something, if God nudges you to give, if God nudges you to help, be willing to do what God nudges you to do. Amen? We need to be there for each other. Right? We say it. Do we believe it? We're all in this together. Right? We're here to help one another get to heaven. As I said before, maybe you don't have money or you don't have things to give, but you can be a listening ear for somebody to just be able to speak to you. We need to be there for one another. Amen? If we've got to be an ear to listen, just be that ear to listen. How many knows when you've got a lot of trouble and a lot of problems and it's all weighing down on you and you have nobody else to talk to, it's nice just to unload it sometimes. Just being an ear to listen, that could be a blessing. But we've got to be willing to take the time to listen. So many times we kill our wounded by the words we say or not being able to encourage and help build each other up when we're struggling. We ought to be willing to help build each other up and let's go on. All right. First Thessalonians 5 verse 11. Talking about building one another up. Freely we should build one another up. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Edify one another, even as also ye do. People get run down enough out there. They don't need to come in church and get ran down as well. Amen. We need to edify and build one another up. Encourage one another. Amen. You see somebody have, going through a hard time? Just go and let them know, hey, I appreciate you. Send them a text. Send them an encouraging scripture. Call them up. Send them a card. Just let them know, hey, I'm here. I'm praying for you. I'm here to hold you up. We talked a couple Sundays ago about about Aaron and her, how they came along beside Moses and they held up his arms when he got tired. Sometimes we're weary and tired. We need somebody to help hold our arms up. We're not going to do that by putting each other down. But we need to edify and build one another up. Amen? Freely. Not because Brother Chris said so. Not because we feel obligated, but because we truly want to help a brother or a sister that's in need. I don't know about you, but I've been there. I've needed the help of my brother and my sister because I was ready to quit and give up. I was ready to throw in the towel. It was too much, I thought. But thank God there are people willing to come alongside me and to pray for me and hold my arms up. We all are in this together, right? Freely we've been given all the same gift, right? I didn't get more salvation because I was in a lower place than you were. We've all been given the same gift. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And we all have the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And we're here to help build each other up to make heaven our home. We shouldn't be stepping on one another trying to get up higher to say, look at me, look at me, right? But we should be there to help build each other up. Let's go to Matthew 18, and we're going to read verses 21 through 35. We should be willing... To freely forgive. Amen? Then Peter to him said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times But until 70 times 7, how much is that? 490. So what he's saying is, don't don't keep count. Just forgive. Well, he did this today. Well, that's two times. Well, he did this three times. Well, four, well, no, no, no. Doesn't matter how many times we should be willing to forgive, right? Freely we've been forgiven. I don't know about you, but I've been forgiven much. And many times, when I should have known better, and I still messed up, but he th- still forgave me. He could have looked over heaven and said, nope, you've had your opportunity. 
You've had your chance. You knew better, but you chose to do it anyway. No, he don't do that, but he freely forgives, right? Let's go on. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to wreck it, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for so for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and the payment to be made. Think about this tonight. He owed such a debt. He didn't have the money to pay it. So now the king's commanding that his whole family would be brought and sold his children and his wife so the payment would be made. Think about that. Somebody come took your your wife or your husband and your kids and they're going to sell them because of the mistake that you made. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children, all that he had and payment to be made. The servant fell down and he worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. That's kind of like our picture of us coming to Jesus. We owed a debt we could never pay. How many knows you can never get good enough to pay your sin debt? You can't quote enough scriptures. You can't write enough checks. You can't do work around the church. You can't teach class and do this and that and find forgiveness. We all owed a debt we could not pay, right? But thank God Jesus was willing to forgive us. Let's go on. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him. Oh, I read that. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. The Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, and he found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and he took him by the throat, saying, Pay me thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay thee all. And he would not. But he went and he cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Now I want to stop for a minute and let's go back. The first guy owed 10,000 talents. That is equal to 226291702 dollars. That's how much this guy owed, the first guy. And the other guy that owed him 100 pence was $17. This guy was forgiven of $226,291,702. He was forgiven of that debt. But somebody else owed him $17, and he wouldn't forgive. The Bible says that he would not forgive him, and he had him thrown into prison. We freely have been forgiven of a huge debt that we could never pay. And we should freely be willing to forgive those that trespass against us. Amen? Can you imagine being forgiven of 226 million? I wouldn't even know how to even think about that. How about $226 and 200? That'd be good enough. But this guy wouldn't forgive the other guy of $17. And he has him thrown into prison. Let's go on. And he would not, but he went and he cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And they came and they told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, and he said unto him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me shouldest not thou also had compassion on the fellow servant even as i had pity on thee talking about freely we receive freely give lord had mercy and pity on us we should have mercy and pity on others right shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant even as i had pity on thee and as his lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay and all that was due unto him, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, 
If ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. That's pretty harsh. How can we expect God to forgive us if we're not willing to forgive? We should freely be willing to forgive because we all owed a debt we could not pay. Right? I know it's easier said than done, but we can pray and ask God to help us. Right? Because how many knows God loves with a supernatural love? Right? And we serve a supernatural God that can help us do supernatural things. By every right we may have, we can make all the reasons why we should not forgive and why we don't have to forgive because of what has happened. But we need to be making excuses why we should forgive instead of why we shouldn't. Anyway, I beat that up enough. Let's go on. Let's go to Haggai chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 2 through 8, and we're going to finish there. We might get done a little early, unless somebody has any comments Well, before we go on. Does anybody have any comments they'd like to add? All right. There's no sacrifice. Right. And also in our giving. We, we give a dollar, that may, may not mean a sacrifice at all, but if you gave 20, that would have been a sacrifice, and God could have blessed you with 40. Instead, you got two instead of 40. Right? Because we're not willing to make that sacrifice. This one's the tough one. Haggai chapter 1, verse 2 through 8. We should freely be committed to help our church. I can't hide behind this. Oh. Haggai chapter 1, or yeah, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye that dwell in your sealed houses. Sorry, I was going to look that up, and I didn't get a chance. Sealed, has anybody got a, something they can look that up? What's sealed houses? They have a side note in their Bible. Somebody looked that up while we're reading it. I was going to, but I didn't have a chance. Paneled walled, closed in. O ye that dwell in your sealed houses, in this house lie in waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe, ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages, and put them into a bag of holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up into the mountain, and bring wood, and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. These people were not satisfied. They gained the clothes, and it wasn't good enough. They put, gained money, and it was like they were putting... Money in a in a bag with holes, and it just seemed like they get they get more, and they put it in, or wasn't enough. And the reason why was because they were neglecting the house of God. They were neglecting the work of the ministry of the house of God. The house of God was laying waste, and they were building and taking care of their own houses. And I believe God wants us to take care of His house. Amen. This should be our first priority. Amen. I believe when God blesses us with a home, we should take care of our home, but we should take care of God's house even better than we take care of our own house. Amen? Don't forget, God should be number one in everything. Amen? God was speaking to Haggai about the people 
He was telling them to consider their ways. They were making money, but they were never satisfied because they were putting the money in bags with holes or they were doing it in the wrong they were doing it for the wrong purpose and the wrong reason. They were never satisfied because they were neglecting God and God's house. I believe God's given me a vision for 2024. I believe that God wants this, this church and for us to see a greater glory in 24. I believe God wants to do more for this church in 24 than we've seen in a long time. But we got to be willing not to neglect the house of God. we got to be willing to step up when things need to be done. Amen? I'm not just talking about cleaning the church and maintenance of the church, but I'm talking about ministry in the church. When they need help with somebody to help drive the van, we need to be willing to help drive the van. Or if they need help back there with the kids, we need to be willing to step up and say, I'm going to help. How do we expect God to add to us if we're not willing to step up and help out? Amen? Oh, me? We need to be careful that we don't become just complacent and just coming to church, worshiping God, sitting in our pew and going home. We need to be willing to help the new converts or new people that may come in to disciple them and pray for them and come alongside them and say, hey, I'm here to help. And it may take you sacrificing a little bit of time or a little effort or an ear to listen or or a hug or a heart or a little time at the altar to pray for somebody. If we expect God to show us a greater glory and expect God to add to us, we got to be willing to do our part. These people were neglecting the things of God. And if we're not careful, we can just get caught up in our ritual routine. And pass by week after week and do the same thing over and over. And not do anything for the Lord. But we need to be willing to do whatever God desires for us to do. We need to be willing to say, Lord, here am I. Whatever you want me to do. If it's to pray for somebody, send somebody a card, make a phone call. Or just to be up here at the altar and pray for somebody. Or just to be that ear to listen. We need to be willing to say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do. Amen? And I believe that's the greatest thing that we can do is be a willing vessel and say, Lord, here am I. You freely gave to me. I freely want to give to you in return. There were people that were there for me. There were people that stayed after church until 11 o'clock at night praying for me because I needed a breakthrough. I need delivered. I need set free. And I need to be willing to be there for somebody else, not just five minutes if it's 15 minutes is needed. I need to be willing to stay the whole 15 minutes and pray until they get their breakthrough or until they get their deliverance. Amen? Because if we want God to add to us, it's going to take work and it's going to take sacrifice. Amen? And I believe God has spoke this to my heart with everything that's in me. I'm not somebody to get up here and say, thus saith the Lord, unless thus saith the Lord has spoken. But I feel like God's saying He wants to show us a greater glory in 24. He wants to add to us in 24, but we got to want it and we got to be willing to say, Lord, I want to do whatever it takes. Amen. Let's stand tonight. Right. Right. And I believe that's why the enemy's fighting so hard right now, attacking people that are sick, people, all kinds of things happening, trying to stop what God wants to do. But we got to be willing to sacrifice, even if we don't feel like it, like she said, amen, and be willing to do what God desires for us to do. I hope tonight the Word of God has uh, challenged you tonight. Freely we've been given. Freely we should be willing to give. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we truly thank you tonight for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord, to stand here and say, I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'm going to heaven. Lord, I thank you for that gift that you've given us. Now, God, I pray tonight, God, that your word would penetrate into our hearts, that we might be freely willing to share the good news of the gospel, that we might be willing to sacrifice and do whatever it takes to see this church glow 
grow and glow for you, Lord. Not that we would get glory, Lord, that we would be lifted up, but God, that you would be lifted up. You said in your word, if we would lift you up, that you would draw all men unto you. I pray tonight, God, as we lift you up, God, that you begin to draw people unto you. Father, I pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. See you Sunday.